The SmartArt feature is used to insert simple graphical layouts of information, like about your organization, as in an organization chart, and that's what we're going to be doing here for our Ghost or Paranormal Society organization, and also for processes and structures. So to go ahead and insert this SmartArt, and what makes this SmartArt is because it's got more than just shapes. It allows you to go ahead and work with those shapes in ways that the features aren't directly available in PowerPoint, but only through SmartArt. So to go ahead and insert this organization chart as part of the SmartArt feature, you can either, from the content box, if you've got one, go ahead and find it and click on Insert a SmartArt Graphic, or if you don't have a content box and you don't want to add one, then you can come up here and click on the Insert tab instead and go to the Illustrations group, and there you go, SmartArt. But since I have a content box, let's do it down below. And it's right there. Click on it, and it's divided into three sections. The left-hand side is all the categories, and you can see that all selected, and then you got lists, but with all, it includes lists. And if you scroll down in the middle section far enough, you'll get to the process, which is right there, process. You can do that, or just go ahead and jump right to what you're looking for, like the hierarchy. Okay, well now we're getting somewhere. And you can see when you hover over it, you get the name of it, horizontal organization chart. How about this one? Oh, organization chart, that's simple. Select it, and in the third and final section here, you get a preview of it and a synopsis. And it says it's used to show hierarchical information or reporting relationships in an organization. Good enough for me. Let's go ahead and click Okie dokie, and there you go. And you can only use this chart if you have a total of five people or less. No, I'm kidding. This is the start of it. You can add shapes, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, and also delete them. But first off, when it comes to working with your organization chart that you get, well, the text pane and also its related contextual design tab for designing your organization chart and also formatting it. Let's go back to design. Now, of course, if you click off, then they all go away. And if you want to work on it, you know, just go ahead and click on a shape or click within the range here and it all comes back. And you can either type the text within the shapes. And speaking of the shapes here, the one up at the top is the head honcho of the organization. That's your CEO, president, and then as you go down, you get your subordinates. Now this one, when you go down, it doesn't go right below it like all these others, but it's to the side. That's your assistant. So you got to have your assistant close to you to say, hey, you know, they take care of me or help me organize my trips and things like that. Or everybody else, like your VPs, and then below them, your managers, will cover that. So you got your shapes. You can go ahead and click to insert or type in your text, or you can do it over here in the text pane. And the purpose of the text pane is that I'll show you is, let me come up here, it's on the design tab in the create graphic group right there. So when you click on it, it disappears. When you select it, highlight it, it reappears. You can also close out of it here, but then, hey, we need to bring it back so I can explain it. Or better yet, hover over it. And in the pop-up, it says it helps you to quickly input and organize the text in your SmartArt graphic. How so? Well, when I come in here and I click in the first box and I want to type in my name, when I'm done, I can't hit the tab key because when I hit tab, it doesn't go to the next box. It just tabs within that shape. And so instead, I have to take my hands off the keyboard and go down to click into the next shape. And that's not efficient. Well, at least not for me. And so what this does over here is that if you've got the cursor flashing in there and you're typing it in, then to go to the next shape, you just have to hit the down arrow key. You see, you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard. We'll do both. Let's go ahead and click in the first shape and type in your name. And, and your name's got to be so big because it's not going to fit. No, I'm kidding. Just keep on typing because I do want my last name. And hey, looky there. It does what's called a best fit. It takes the text and it shrinks it until everything fits within that shape. And it updates all the other boxes to keep it looking uniform. So you don't get a teeny tiny name and everybody else has got their you know big names here. But if you do want to control this and say, well, everybody else is resizing, but I would like to make mine smaller or larger. Well, if you make it larger, it won't fit within the shape, but you can override it and click on the drop down arrow and shrink it up and see it's smaller. It doesn't affect the rest. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo because I like to keep it uniform. So at the end, when I want to go ahead and type in underneath my name, the title, to get underneath the name, you want to do what's called a soft return because if you hit the enter key known as a hard return in my Microsoft Word training videos, it's going to create a new shape at the same level as the other shape. So I've got one president, hit enter, it'll actually add another shape here. 
which we'll go over in just a minute, but not now. So hold down the shift key and hit enter ever so gently. No, just shift enter. That's a soft return. And you can see now I'm below my name and I can just go ahead and type in president. Great. So you can do it that way. Take my hands off the keyboard to go into the next shape. Or if I'm in here, well, I come over here and I'm done typing. And it works the same over here. In other words, let me go ahead and delete the title here. And you can see it's being deleted over here. You know, you can type in your name here. And then to be able to get the title below my name, don't hit the enter key. Otherwise, you'll create another bullet at the same level or the shape there. You really want to see, okay, fine, hit enter. See, that's horrifying. Nobody else should be at the same level as me or you, right? In any case, if you have the undo, you can undo that or you can hit the backspace delete key. In any case, I hit the undo. That was quick for me. And then instead, hold down the shift key, hit enter to do a soft return, and then, of course, type in your title. And then to go down to the next box, which is the assistant, all I have to do is keep my hands on the keyboard and hit the down arrow key because I'm focused over here working in the text pane to continue on. And I don't have to, again, waste that time going from the keyboard to the mouse. This one's going to be then shift enter so I can add a title for doc. And then arrow key down and I can just keep on typing and really whip through this here. And that's it. And so you can see how everything just was easy and quick, at least for my end, to enter it over here in the task pane instead of, you know, clicking in each shape and then typing it in. So let's go ahead and go through additional features than just typing in because up here on the design tab in the create graphic, we're going to be staying in this group here for a while. We want to learn how to add shapes and remove them. So let's go ahead and go through all these here, or at least those that we can because the add bullet as you can see in the pop-up, it's only available if the selected layout supports bulleted text, and this one doesn't. So we won't be covering that here. But if you want to add a shape, be mindful of what shape you have selected, because if you want to add a shape, it's going to be focused on this shape that you have selected. So I can add a shape above Kevin Sorbo, so he gets bumped down or demoted. Or I can add a shape before or after him at the same level. So let's go see what kind of options we got here. So there's your add a shape after or before. Now, you see how they're all at the same level? You could say that this is your seniority, so whoever's on the left-hand side is the most senior VP, and then, you know, go from left to right. So if you want to go ahead and add somebody else to the company who has been a VP and you're just now creating an organization chart, but they're more senior than Kevin, then you want to do before. So it shrinks everybody up because you're... Smart art graphic is only yay big, right? You can go ahead and click and drag to resize it to make it a little bit bigger, but we only have so much space here on this slide. So now it's before it. You can come in here, select it, and then type in. There you go. And so we added them at the same level. And then let's come up here and see what other shapes we get. Now we have that shape selected. And if we come back up here and click on Add Shape, so you know before and after, how about a shape above? Well, if I do that, that's going to push him down. He's going to be demoted, and then I'd have to change it and say, well, I can't have you as a VP. That's the person above you. So with it selected, I can go ahead and hit the delete key, and he'll get bumped back up. So I can add the shape, let's see, above, or, well, now I have Kevin Sorbo selected here. We can say instead of above, below. So instead of pushing him down and adding a shape above Kevin Sorbo, as he did with Mardi Gras, we actually have now a shape below him, and we can say that this is going to be There we go. And then, hey, just for the sake of laughs here, let's go ahead and add one more shape below Mr. Humphreys, where maybe we can add an assistant to Kevin here. Come back up here, click on Add Shape, because besides from adding a shape at the same level before or after, or somebody above you or below you, you can have an assistant. Let's do that. So since it's an assistant, the assistant will keep close to the shape that you had selected and push everybody below you down because, you know, your assistants work right with you. Well, these guys might, but as far as the organization structure of the chart goes, this is the one who's basically there, just outside your office, ready to jump in where these other guys may be on site somewhere else because, you know, your assistants are the ones who are going to be able to keep track of your schedules and plans and find your paperwork, hopefully, so you look really smart and good. In any case, our assistant's going to be... And there you go. And then you can see over here in the text pane, 
how it's being laid out. In fact, let's go ahead and close out of that. You don't need to see that. And then next, after we learn how to add our shapes, if you want to remove them, well, just go ahead and click on the box here and hit the delete key and they're gone. But let's undo that and bring Shirley back. And then next, let's go ahead and go over promoting and demoting. So if I want to promote Shirley with her shape selected, click on promote and where does she go? Instead of the admin assistant for Kevin, it goes right to the president. Oh, that's nice. I could use more help. And how about if I demote? Well, it goes back to Kevin here. What about these other guys here? So if I go ahead and say, well, Willie, you know, you haven't been doing a good job. Let me go ahead and demote you. It puts him down below Norman Price. Now, if you're like, he shouldn't be a subordinate to Norman Price. Should be to Mardi Gras. Well, there's no way here to go ahead and click and drag and pull him over. So what you probably want to do is go ahead and just select Mardi Gras and then go ahead and add a shape below him and then go ahead and, you know, type in Willy Wonka over here, who's not a VP anymore, but maybe a manager. And then come over here and select Willy, hit the delete key, and there you go. So there's for your promotions and emotions. Now when it comes to right and left, you can switch the layout of the Smart Art graphic between left and right and right to left. So now everything, so Norman Price is on the left-hand side. If I want to flip him, flip him over. Now he's on the right-hand side. Oh, it's, it's kind of ghosting here. Let me click off. There we go. And so if I don't like the structured over on the right-hand side, we want to flip it back. Well, then we're back to where we started. And let's go ahead and select a shape here so we can finish this off, at least with the next step, to moving up or down. Now when it says moving up and down, it's actually left or right. So when it comes to seniority with the VPs from left to right, if Mardi Gras is now the senior VP, he should be at the far most left. With him selected, let's go ahead and move him up. So then Norman Price gets bumped over. So if I take Norman and I move him down, he goes down and then it's Kevin Sorbo. Now let's go ahead and move him up and keep it as such. Looks pretty good. And then finally your layout, go ahead and click on it. There's a standard layout, horizontally center and arrange the subordinate shapes below the selected shape. Well, let's, let's do this below the selected shape. So let's go ahead and select Kevin Sorbo, click on layout. Standard, how about if we do left hanging? So everybody hangs to the left, including, well, the admin assistant was already there, but now the manager gets hanging to the left. We can change that, go back to standard, which now is just right below it, and you can just play with these and find out which layout works best for you. And in fact, in the layouts group, click on the more button and wow, you could really rearrange this. And just hovering over it gives you a preview to see if that's what you'd like to see there. And ooh, I like that one, the architecture layout, because my name is really big. Isn't that great? In any case, we'll leave it as such. Let's click off. You can change the colors, maybe something more colorful. Um, well, colorful range accent colors two to three. That's the name of that one. Go ahead and select it. Not too bad. And then you get the smart art styles, something to make it a little bit more shiny or intense. Oh, that is. Modder effect. Well, keep that. What's this down here for 3D? Something polished? Well, go ahead and select and play with those. And let's go before we learn about resetting or converting. Let's go to the format tab because let's say for a particular shape, we don't want it to be like the others or maybe dock because, you know, same color for the assistant as the VPs. How about if we go ahead and do a shape fill, and we can hover over it and change the color. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Pink accent to darker 50%. can also use one of the styles here. You're not going to be able to see it until it's done. Select, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. I'll go with this one. That one's not bad. And you can also, you know, select the text inside. Mini formatting toolbar to change it if you don't want white text. But you got to keep it light, because if it's too dark, you won't be able to see it. Now, after you make your changes, if you're like, you know what, I just wish I could go back to the way it was. Well, let's go ahead and click on the Design tab, and there you go. Reset Graphic. Discard all the formatting changes made to the SmartArt graphic. And we're back to the plain, blah, no color. But hey, we can just start over again, right? And then finally, let's go ahead and do something else. Let's go to slide 6. Well, in the same vein of our training here. That if you have some text you want to convert into a smart art, like the bulleted text, you've got the title and then the supporting items, the list. Go ahead and click and drag and select it all. And then you can come up here on the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, and you can do it right here, Convert to Smart Art Graphic. Click on it and choose one. You can hover over it, get a preview of it, and there's your org chart or 
Ooh, how about this? Vertical Chevron list. Sounds fancy. Select it. There you go. So there's your title now. Instead of on top, it's over on the Chevron shape and then everything else. And these ghosts are kind of getting in the way. And speaking of these ghosts, instead of doing it with text, I can also do it with shapes. Let's go ahead and hold down the shift key and select all these guys here. Just come up here, click on the format tab and go to the picture styles group to picture layout. Click on that and well, find something that works for you. And I can't see it the preview. So I'll just have to go with what I feel is right here. Circular picture call out, select it. And hey, there you go. And we've got text here. Well, it's white against the ghost and that's not going to work. So if I go ahead and type in and then hold down the shift key and hit the home key. It takes the cursor that was at the end and it goes all the way to the beginning of the text box and it selects everything in between. That's a shortcut key. I've got lots of them that you can learn in my word training video. So let's go ahead and right click on it to bring up the mini formatting toolbar and oh, there we go. Change it from something. I could do boo and red. Let's just go with black. Oh, that kind of bleeds. You see how fun this is being creative green. All right. And you've got text over here. It's so tiny. I mean, God, you could kind of stretch that box out and then type in text. Then you have to resize it. But uh, that's just not working for me here. So I'll go ahead and leave it as such and click off. But in any case, you do get your options. And if you want to, you can go ahead and click and drag and resize it to make it a little bit bigger, as well as the individual shapes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.